Hi, author Denise Vega here for another episode of Picture Book Quick Tips. This is part four of my five part series on the picture book abilities. And this week we're going to be talking about illustration ability. Now coming at it as a writer only, I need to be thinking about, am I leaving room for illustrations in my story? And if not, A, how am I to know that? And how can I fix that? So I'm just gonna give you a few things. There's a, there's a lot to this and it's, I still am learning, but I think that uh, sometimes when we're first jumping into the world of picture books, we're often, at least that's what I did, I was writing short stories. I wasn't actually writing picture book stories. There was a big difference. And so some of the things that I now consider when I'm writing a picture book story, and, and I may get it down initially and just get it all out. And then when I'm re doing, going through my revisions, I'm starting to look for where I've hindered the illustration potential. So for example, I might be very specific for a location. Um, Sammy was sitting on her bed reading a book. Okay, that's great. That's really great. A, does Sammy need to be on the bed for some reason? Is that important to the story? Or could Sammy be in a beanbag chair, in a tree, on a bench? Um, how important is that bed? Is she supposed to be reading a book? Is that part of the story? Or could she be doing something else entirely? So I start asking my questions about the specificities that I have in my book. How specific am I about location, um, colors, pieces of clothing? Um, if putting on that coat, if that coat's key to the story, fine, then let's put it in there. But if it doesn't matter if the, if the character's wearing a coat, let's leave it out and give the illustrator um, an opportunity to have some fun with whatever the character might be wearing. So specificity and detail is something that I look for. Uh, also, really trying to focus on the emotional content of my piece and avoiding too much extrapolation on action. Obviously, we want to have good action and story forward movement, but a lot of that action can be depicted in the illustrations. So we need to decide, um, it, does it make sense to say, uh, she ran with all her might across the playground? Uh, maybe she just ran or she sprinted and that's it. It's two words and the illustrator gets to decide where that's happening, how quickly that's happening and all of that. So. It, it does take some time and practice to get into this. And one thing that we may find is that we lose some of our wonderful language. We have to let go of some of that to enable the illustrator to do his or her job um, and do it well. And we want that because it's a collaboration. Even if we're not talking to that illustrator, it is a collaborative process and we need to allow them to tell part of the story, to extend, expand it, to elevate it in some way, to add to that interactive experience that we're gonna have um, with our reader. So specificity is a big one, um, action, really focusing on the emotional intent of your story and or scene. Uh, also, sound is a little harder to depict in pictures. So if there are important sounds in your book that need to be expressed, that's a great place where, where your words are gonna be really important. So think about that sound. Think about other sensory details that might be more challenging to put in illustrations, but that are also imperative to your story. Don't just throw them in because, ooh, I get to write this and the illustrator wouldn't be able to illustrate it very well. It's really about expressing that story in as few words as possible with the biggest impact as possible. So hopefully that helps in terms of that illustration and writer relationship and giving them room. And I will see you next time for the last installment of this five-part series. Thanks so much and I'll see you then.